she, her, hers, and I want to welcome you to this affirming place called Neighborhood Church. Uh, you can find your welcome guide and your kids clipboard materials in the link in the comment section below, or you can go to neighborhoodchurchatl.com slash live stream. Before we get into service, I want to invite you to just take a deep breath this morning and get leveled and grounded in yourself. I hope you enjoy the service and know that all of who you are is welcome here. Good morning, friends. I'm Angie. And I'm Andy. And we are the co-pastors here at Neighborhood and are excited to get to celebrate communion with you today. Um, this is our last summer communion um, virtually. So um, we hope we'll get to see you this afternoon to partake of the elements together and to visit and see each other face to face. Um, and we hope you will join in us with us this morning in the liturgy of communion where we pray and sing and um, experience God together. But first, I want you to hear these words from uh, the letter to the people of Galatia, right? Um, the Galatians chapter three, this is verses 26 through 28, and it might be familiar, but I invite you to hear it with fresh ears. You are all God's children through faith in Jesus Christ. All of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. And here's the important part of what it means to be loved by God in the way that we follow Jesus Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male and female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God for all of us who are the beloved children of God. Will you say thanks be to God? Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? God, you are so good and we are so grateful for the ways that you show up in our lives. And I pray that you will make yourself known here with us today in all of the places we have gathered our attention to be together and to be present with you. We pray all of this in the name of our resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
so obviously we're here in this empty sanctuary and um, we, I don't know, it's a weird thing to be in this space. Yeah, it's really echoey. <laughs> you can hear that. Um, yeah. And it's the first time I came in here, I got really teary after some months of not being in here. Um, but it, we can, it, we, I both really miss you and I can feel your presence here, mm -hmm. right? Like this place always feels full and vibrant and, and safe and loving. It doesn't feel empty and hollow. Yeah. It just is literally empty right now. Um, but this is our um, last month of exclusively virtual worship. Yeah. In August, we start preparing to come back together and we're going to start doing some practice runs and some test runs for our relaunch in September. And we are excited and slightly trepidatious. Yeah, I mean, it's um, really, really wonderful to plan and think about like getting back together with you, many of you in this space. Um, and <laughs> it takes a lot of work to gather yeah. every Sunday morning and to have a full live in-person worship service, a different kind of work than we've been doing this past year. So it's a shifting of gears. If you will. A shifting, yes. You'll, if you read your email this week, you saw that's our new August theme shift. Um, but what I'm really struck by in this is that this passage is at the core of who we are as neighborhood. Whether we are dispersed in worship and in connection or whether we are starting to gather back together. And I hope that as we start to prepare ourselves and our souls and our energy for shifting gears and gathering back together, that we are able to recenter that we really believe this, that in God, through the love of Christ Jesus, everybody is just a beloved child of God, a beloved creation. And that when we look at one another, we don't have to see the labels that the world gives us. We don't even have to figure out our own labels, right? We don't have to, maybe we know who we are, um, but maybe we don't yet, right? Or maybe we are a complex weave of things Spoiler alert, yeah. yeah, we all are. But in Jesus, the way of Jesus, the way we live out that love in the world, all that matters to me is that you are a beloved creation. Full stop. Yeah. Whatever else you are is beautiful and wonderful, but that's what the story is, is that we see other people as whole and beloved children of God, there's, and that the divisions of the world don't stop us. There's something about what Paul's trying to get at, I think, is that, like, um, you know, God has become one with people in Jesus, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's, that's, that's a the part intent, of the story, right? right? Like, is that um, God became one of us, and by becoming one of us, God links God's self to all of us forever. <laughs> And if that's the case, then there's something about Jesus and um, that, that covers over, not, not, in a, not in a masking way, um, but in, a, in an umbrella kind of way. Mm -hmm. covers, in an embracing sort of yeah, way. Yeah, in enfolding way. Um, all of our identities, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you have all of the identities that you have and that you um, name and claim for yourself. Um, and like there is something about being made by God and loved by God and enfolded in the arms and the identity of God mm -hmm. um, that is uh, something that um, holds all of the other things that are true about us. And the other liberative piece of this that would have been really countercultural of the time, and if we embrace it fully, is really countercultural now as yeah. well, is that. Those identities of the world that our culture uses and their culture at their time used to differentiate and thereby oppress people um, are negated by God in the Christian yeah. community. Um, like the oppression is negated, not the identities, right? But that that differentiation of value is is null and void in the kingdom of God. All people are liberated and find freedom in Christ and find wholeness in the love of God and are invited and welcomed and um, seen as gifted human beings to share 
the love of God in the world and to be their whole authentic selves. Yeah, and like all drills down into that, right? Like even down to the layer of like <laughs> ethnicity, Jew or Greek, right? Like slave or free, enslaved or or free person. Um, like so, the your kind of social status in some ways uh, in that time, but also like literally the status of your freedom, right? Um, and you know, male, female, like the, so. All of these identities that are seen as oppressive in some ways, they they are enfolded, all of them, into into the love and heart and life of God. And I'm reminded that this is one of the passages that would have been removed from scriptural teaching by enslavers and human traffickers um, and torturers yeah. who enslaved other people because they didn't want people to know this part of the story. Right, because then it would, they couldn't continue their practices. And so this is part of the liberation that we find in Jesus for all people. Yeah. And that God sees us in all the places that we are. You know, yeah. like I don't want this to feel like we're here, like I don't want you to receive this as like a um, all lives matter kind of thing. You know? Right. Like I don't see color <laughs> because, um, you know, God has just made us all one. I mean, God has made all of humanity. And we are all loved by God, but in our differences, in our distinctions. And what God's saying is like those identities are, of course, whole and valid and beautiful, but they do not determine your worth in the kingdom of God. You don't have to have one identity or another to be unfolded. And And whenever we hear things like this in scripture, we're being really repetitive, but whenever we hear things like this in scripture, it is always on the side of the oppressed, right? It is always speaking out to say not all lives matter and... um, you know, white lives matter too, right? Just That's your, not what yeah, it's saying. Yeah. It's always saying, oh, you thought, right? Jesus put it as you heard it said, but I say unto you, right? You heard it said that um, free folks had more power than enslaved folks, but I tell you, there is no distinction in God's world, right? You heard that whatever, right? Men had more value than women, but I say unto you, right? There is no distinction in the kingdom of God. So that is also what we find at this table, right? That is always the message at this table, that all of who you are, all of the identities that you bring are fully welcome, fully valued. Even the ones you aren't certain about yet, even the ones you have a lot of guilt or shame about, feel hard, right? Yeah. Sometimes part of our identities um, are not ones we want to continue to embrace and we are ready to move past um, and, and transform, right? And that is a good and holy work as well. And all of that we believe is possible at this strange little table even when what we have are these tiny little cups with a tiny little wafer. Um, It doesn't feel the same as communion to some of us, uh, but it still is the work of God who takes ordinary, strange and simple things and makes them transformative and divine through love. And I think there's always an element that this is like a foretaste, right? Like this is never supposed to be the whole meal, right? This is sort of a taste, a sample, uh, a little Costco sample, if you will, of like what the whole thing will be like. You know what I mean? So I confess, these aren't my favorite, but but tasting and, and experiencing what it is and what the the full meal banquet at the at the kingdom um, in, when everyone is there at the kingdom at the end is famous. This helps me remember that, right? Now I'm really stuck on this idea of Costco as an image of heaven (laughs) or like the kingdom of God. But I think it would be like a Costco taste of what will be like an abundant, fresh farm to table meal. Mm, Right? Yeah. That I can get on board with. Farmer's market sample. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. But maybe this is the Costco taste version of the farmer's market sample that we normally have. Yeah. Anyway, why don't we take a deep breath together and prepare our hearts and our minds to participate in this Holy Communion. All of us together. (sighs) Friends and neighbors, we are all invited to this table. This table that doesn't belong to AGRI, it doesn't belong to this congregation, um, it doesn't belong to this denomination, it belongs to Jesus. And Jesus invites absolutely all of us 
all of who we are, um, to gather around this table wherever we are to tell this ancient story together. So I invite you into this story wherever you are this morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O oh, blessed are you, our Alpha and our Omega, whose strong and loving arms encompass the universe and all of who we are. For with your eternal word and Holy Spirit, you are forever one God. Through your word, you created all things and called them good. And in you, we live and move and have our complicated being. When you felt, when we fell into sin, you did not desert us. You made covenant with your people Israel and spoke through your prophets and teachers. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us all of grace and truth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join that unending hymn together singing. are you, and blessed is Jesus Christ who called you Abba, Father. And as a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own, and filled them with a longing for a peace that would last, and for a justice that would never fail. In Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and our death, and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead the same Jesus who now is with you in glory and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, singing together. Christ is dying, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ I invite you, wherever you are, to stretch out your hands for these elements as we ask for God to be present to us through them. O pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts, that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood. As the grain and grapes once dispersed in the fields, we know a little bit about being dispersed are now united on this table in bread and wine. 
So we, we and all your people may be gathered from every time and place into the unity of the eternal household. Feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. And all God's people sang together. And with the confidence and the boldness of beloved human beings enfolded into the life of God, let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our, Our Creator, Creator, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we hope we'll get to see you this afternoon, um, and we will get to partake together um, of these elements. And I think we're going to wait to partake with you yeah. this afternoon. Um, but I'll remind you, if you come, that there are, um, and I'm just going to show you again, because every time it's still a little tricky. Um, there's a little, uh, oh, I can't even get it. This is why it's tricky, y'all. All right, we might try to prep these for you ahead of time. There's two layers. There's a little sil a little plastic clear layer here on the top, cellophane sort of layer that I can't get off, which is the problem. And then there's a foil layer that will peel off and open for the juice. Um, so we will help you with those this afternoon. Um, children are welcome. You are welcome. You don't have to be a member of neighborhood. You don't have to have come ever before to a worship service in person. You don't, you don't ever have, have to be, ever received communion before. You don't have to be entirely certain of what you believe. If you want to encounter love and grace, like we've talked about through Jesus, then this is one of the places we believe you can encounter that. And we'll be really excited to see you. Yeah. Um, we're going to be on McClendon, out yep. front of the church, at 1561 McClendon Ave. You just pull up if you want, um, or you can park and get out. And, hang, and out. hang out for a while. Yeah. Um, and if it's raining, we will come indoors, uh, just indoors to the sanctuary space. Yeah, hope so. that we can see you soon. Hey, what's up, friends and neighbors? Kylan here, pronouns he, his, and him, and I'm the Director of Restorative Practices here at Neighborhood Church. I'm so excited to be in worship with you all again and sharing in this moment of response, a time when we come together in order to think of the ways that we can respond to all that we've heard and experienced in today's service. So, doing a little different today, but go ahead and drop in the comment section down below, what is that one nugget? What is the takeaway that you are going to um, take with you today out of today's service, I know for me, a part of the scripture that is just piercing in my heart is that all are one in Christ Jesus. That is just so powerful for me. And I'm going to sit with that this week and really um, meditate on what that means and what that looks like in my practice. Um, so go ahead and drop that in the comment section down below. I'll be down there with you chatting it up um, as I watch today's service because maybe something else is bubbling up um, by now. But friends, as we continue to move into this service in this moment of response, we invite you all to join us um, here at the church on today from 3.30 to 4.30 as we do communion. Um, there are going to be some prayer stations and things of that nature for you all. Um, and so come on out, get some more information about um, the opening that we're planning and things of that nature. Thank you all so much. To those of you who did the survey and gave us your feedback, um, we are going through the, all of those things right now, trying to ensure that this relaunch is exactly um, what you need and what we need and how can we do it in a safe way um, for us all to still feel like it's our neighborhood, but in a safer um, pandemic-proof, maybe? <laughs> pandemic-proof way. Yeah, I'm going to roll with it. 
Um, also, as always, neighbors, you can feel free to give to the life and work of the Neighborhood Church. And that number is going to come up on the screen right here. And you'll also have a link down in the comment section um, for our text to give. We cannot do this work without you, neighbors. And we are just so excited to continue um, being in community with you and um, doing this work and doing ministry and life with you. So with that in mind, receive this as your benediction on today. Go in love, go in peace, go knowing that all of who you are is beloved by God. Neighbor, go knowing that you are a part of this family and we are all one in Christ Jesus. We need you to survive, neighbors. So thank you again for being a part of this community and have a great week. See you later. <laughs>